Good morning, everybody. This is Bob the Grizz <clears throat> coming up to you from Maryland. It's been rainy the past couple days, so I decided to do a video. Um, my apologies to those who uh, were subscribers. I haven't been on doing this too much. Uh, mostly, I, I have a lot of videos on Yellow Hawk Customs out, Custom Outdoors channel. Uh, if you want to see more of me and the Hawk and uh, things we have to say and do and whatever about gear and knives and whatever, jump on over there if you want to see a little more, you know, action or hear a little more stories and whatever. Okay, so that's a Yellow Hawk <coughs> Custom Outdoors channel. I've done a lot of them with, with Doug before I decided to just do a couple by myself. <clears throat> Everything's been covered. Uh, there's not much to really talk about. I try to do some medicine, whatever, because that's what I'm pretty good at. Um, but um, and nobody else really covers it, uh, especially the surgical side. So without further ado, I'm going to talk about some uh, the knives you carry and some of the things that will enhance your knife experience, okay? Usually when I go outside, and I, and I rarely carry anything this, this big anyway when I go anywhere because I'm really not in any type of wilderness. Mostly I'm in a park or a forest or whatever, and it's within walking or distance of anything. But anyway, um, I carry a, a packet like this. Um, usually have a lighter, as you can see, lighter. All right. Um, <clears throat> Folding knife, it's the Trekker by Victorinox. After the uh, blade, the next best thing on this knife is saw. Right? And after that, it's usually the awl. You can sew with it, you can uh, puncture things, make things, so forth. Okay? Great item to have. I like uh, Victorinox anything that has the saw on it. Uh, there's other complicated ones that I don't, I don't care for. Anyway, I have a fire steel, or not a fire steel, but a knife steel right here. Okay. You can use anything, ceramic, stone, whatever whatever floats your boat. Okay. And then I have a, a pretty, pretty large uh, folding knife. I carried this when I was in the military. Okay. It's a Little Hawk. Okay. It's made in Sky Japan. Very nice folder, thick. Strong knife, strong folder, okay? In uh, conjunction to this little packet, you usually carry a neck knife or a, another um, <clears throat> type of uh, fixed blade knife. This is a Puka style knife, all right? Uh, my card handles, uh, it's a Scandi grind. Nice little spine for a small knife. Very handy for carving, so forth. And of course, I always like to finish uh, uh, sheaths, I think they're cool. I uh, put some uh, oil on this and wax. They're already form fitted to your sh to your knife anyway, pretty much. So you can form fit them if you want. Okay, it's in there pretty tight. After that, <clears throat> I'd like to introduce you to a little small utility knife. You can buy them at IKEA. They're Japanese or Chinese. You can uh, sharpen them on one side and flatten them on the other. I like a chisel effect, like a kiridashi, which is the Japanese carpentry knife or everyday carry knife. Um, only a buck sixty-five or so. You can cut your sandwiches, you know, bananas, sausage, cheese, whatever. It's a nice little adjunct to your um, larger knife. You'll probably use this knife eighty percent of the time over your bigger one, and in doing regular, just regular chores. Uh, you lose it, you won't, you won't cry, and you can just slip underneath the Ranger band on one of your uh, regular knives. Okay. Nice little knife. All right. uh, also, I'd like to <clears throat> show this huge ferro rod I got from Dave Brown a long time ago, one of our rendezvous. Um, it's a monster. It's a beast. Uh, works well. Just want to thank Dave. Have thanked him. Put a little beaner on it. Put it right on my belt loop and carry it. Yeah. Next is uh, a <clears throat> medium-sized Leku. Uh, this is from the Finnish Army. Uh, they were two for 22 at the Sportsman's Guide, and they went fast. No sooner than I ordered two, I, I waited two, two days, they were gone. Okay, now they're putting them on eBay for like $85 and whatever. It's just ridiculous. But anyway, it's, it's a 1095 or so steel, brass, uh, birch. I waxed the birch, threw some uh, shellac or fingernail polish down here. These areas here where water might go down and, and rust the tang. It's a rat tail tang. I also shellac or 
fingernail, clear fingernail polish around the, the butt end. Uh, typical finish uh, type sheath, which I find to be very, very well made and, and uh, just they hold, you know. I, uh, I wet formed this and I waxed it. Used a rubber tube for a Ranger band. I got a ferro rod and a ceramic rod for sharpening and so forth. A little paracord and wear it around my neck and throw it in my pocket and clip it onto something. I rarely put my knives on my belt. Uh, it's, it's, it's a rarity. I just think it's inconvenient. I like having a knife right in front of me or through a, um, a pocket, like a cargo pocket or so in the front of a, an anorak, which I use most of the time in the winter anyway. Moving right along <clears throat> is uh, Condor knives. Uh, excellent knives, good steels, well made. Uh, they're now more expensive than they used to be. Uh, they used to be pretty cheap. Now you're paying for 60 to to $100 or so. This is the primitive camp knife made by, or designed by Matt Graham. It goes along the Leku style, which is the medium size uh, finish knife or Sami knife. I like wide bellies. I like short curves. They're easy to sharpen. This is 1095. Some of the other steels, it will strike a fair rod. Some of the other steels um, they uh, have is 1075. I particularly think it's kind of soft, but um, I don't. I, I like 001 tool. I like A2. I like uh, 1095. And if you look at Forge and Fire, if they're going to make a bigger knife uh, to a sword, they usually use 5160. All all of them do. Just look at your uh, programs and say, Hey, would you make it out of 5160? Kukri's made it out of 5160. I'm a traditionalist. I stay with the old steels. They worked. Our ancestors killed people. They hunted. They, they, uh, you know, skin and game and, and so forth and so on with older steels that weren't as, as reliable. So um, they're making these steels better, and uh, you can't go wrong with them. I'm not going to pay thousands of dollars for a chromium B238567 from the planet Uranus, okay? Just not going to do it, all right? These work for me, all right? <clears throat> if I need to bust down doors or shit like that. I'll use a battering ram or a huge axe or a pick or something, okay? Anyway, a knife is a knife is a knife, all right? She is pretty well constructed. Um, of course, ferro rod, ceramic, touch up. Compass, usually will go in my pocket. Sometimes compasses have a uh, magnifying glass here. You can use them for uh, start, starting a fire on a very sunny day. Or if you, you need to read like me, sometimes you can't see things, okay? Uh, <clears throat> rarely will you have a map. Rarely will you have a topographical map of the area. So all I want to do is know, know north, south, east, and west. I don't care to stick a, put a stick in the ground and watch the sun go around it. I, if I need something, I need it fast. So that's uh, sort of a blend of uh, modern with primitive, okay? If I have to, I know how to do it. I'm not going to use my watch, okay? So forth. Same way with bow drilling and all. Um, if I had to, I could. Uh, I'm not real proficient at it. I don't care to be. I just have matches all the time and lighters and whatever. Um, in a situation where you're going to be stranded, whatever, mostly will probably be an urban. You can bust into things, steal shit, whatever, or take them off dead bodies, whatever the case might be. So I've never been in, in the wilderness. I've been in Montana. I've been in the Adirondacks. I've always been on you know paths and things. Never really kind of knew where I was. Like I knew where I, I was in I was in Texas. <laughs> Or I was in New York, all right? So, uh, you know, true wilderness, it's disappearing, but uh, compass, I think, is, is really good to have and uh, at least carry some stuff for fires on you, okay? All right, anyway, next. Uh, as you know, the uh, uh, Yukari Puko, the uh, 110 and the 140 has pretty much taken the bushcrafting, you know, uh, community by storm. You can find knives similar to this one. There's the, the Garberg, there is uh, Falkneven, uh, there is Pelkonen, which was made by Captain Pelkonen of the uh, Finnish uh, army. They all look very similar. Oh yeah, okay, I know the steels might be different, so forth and so on. And also the price point is more expensive than this knife. When it first came out, this knife was like 20 some bucks. Now it's 40 some odd dollars without a sheath. Okay, if with a sheath it's 50, 60, whatever. Before the money, you get an excellent knife. This is a, a striker ferro rod because I know you guys are really you, know, you need to know that kind of stuff. Uh, <clears throat> it has a um, probably a narrow rat tail type tang. Nice uh, polymer elastic handle. I have the 110. This is the 140 millimeters. Okay, that's just the length of the knife. And uh, great overall knives. Uh, I know guys who have them. 
They swear by them. They love them. All right. If you want a swivel or a dangler, there you go. Small beaner. You can move gear up and down mountains and hillsides and whatever if you want with a pulley system. Or you can uh, maybe pull yourself. You know, I think it would be safe to say one time or so, although they're not rated for that sort of thing. Here's a wristlet for uh, paracord. Yeah, that would go on, on my uh, wrist, as you know. Uh, another ferro rod. Okay, a striker. Uh, sharpening stone. <laughs> this is a um, Swiss Army knife made for Mauser. It has a clip point blade. Also a uh, spear point blade. I really like Swiss Army knives. That's the traditionalist in me. Here is a saw. It has a cover over it. Bottle opener, flathead screwdriver. The uh, awl on this uh, knife is slimmer and longer. It does not have a hole in it for you know for sewing, but you can still sew with it. Okay. Um, and they, of course, they all have usually have bottle openers or, or corkscrews because they like to stay. You know, they they're reminiscent of drinking wine and champagne in the Alps. <laughs> but if you go on, um, there's some Swiss Army knife hacks. Uh, you can you do a lot with this thing. Okay. All right. And of course, another lighter. All right. Lighter will be can be used to uh, make a fire even when it doesn't have its fuel because you just use the flint and steel type of apparatus on it. Okay. That's it. Uh, quick, vi um, quick video. Uh, don't have much to say. If you really want to see uh, a lot of other videos I made with Doug Wilson, go to Yellowhawk Customs Outdoors. There's a plethora of videos I made with him and for him um, with packs and cooking gear and stoves and things of that nature. Um, I went off a little bit to myself because uh, pretty much every else is, everything else is covered and it's basically people have told me it's like to hear your perspective. So uh, you've seen it before. Uh, everybody's got an opinion um, just the way it is. And no offense, but that's 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 cool. <clears throat> um, just want to remind you about the National Bushcraft Rendezvous, which is uh, November 3rd through the 11th at the Paragon Dispersed Camping Area in the Cumberland region or section of the Daniel Boone National Forest. It's in eastern Kentucky. Closest town is Moorhead. Uh, you can get information on that from the National Bushcraft Rendezvous 2018 Forum. You have to join and get info on that if you want to come. Uh, then you can join the click or you can join the woods runner from the minds of Hawk and Grizz. I'm the admin on all three of them and uh, I'll accept you and you'll be able to get the information plus a lot of other cool stuff. Okay. You can also email me at bob 2 sticks at hotmail.com and uh, I'll get right back to you. I'd like to make this a nice event. So uh, check it out. Come out and hang out with us. A number of classes and um, camaraderie. And it's going to be a good time. Okay. So this is the Grizz. Thank you very much.